there. Uh, we are currently live. Good. We're back. <laughs> I don't remember where we stopped. Uh, there goes Discord. So, woo! For those of you watching, thanks to TRG, that link just went up. Thank you. Anyway, let's find out where the hell we left off. Chapter five. Yeah, looks like uh, it. Oh, are we? St Wait, chapter five. Are we in Kofu still? I. Think oh. that's about to come to an end soon? Uh, oh, right. We're running away with Kondo san and Saito. I don't remember the cheese with her voice. <laughs> Saito and I took hold of him and ran into the forest to escape under cover of night. We'll be in Hachi Hachioji <clears throat> soon, Kondo san. Hang in there. All right. Perhaps it was because I'd never seen him lose a battle before, but this was the first time I'd seen Kondo-san so... drained. I let so many men die. There's no point in beating yourself up over that now. Like Hichikata-san said, we just don't have what it takes to beat an army with western weapons and tactics. I might as well have kept my mouth shut, for all that my words seemed to reach him. Perhaps if it was someone, if someone else were to achieve, maybe they wouldn't have died. The fuck was that? <laughs> Me moving stuff around on the desk. No. Are you listening to me? I said... Uh, hey! Who's out there? From the other side of the bushes, I heard a voice that didn't sound familiar. I peeked out just long enough to catch sight of a uniform that wasn't ours. I know you heard me. Who are you? His voice had quickly taken on a dangerous edge. I'll buy you some time. Take the chief and escape. Thank you, Saito-san. I gave him a quick bow of Take thanks. A drink, by the way. Ah, fuck! It already started, and we're not even five minutes in! Yeah, that's right. For those of you that don't remember, every time Jesus says thank you or I'm sorry, you take a drink of something that's not alcohol. You will be hydrated. And you will also probably not die. <laughs> I gave him a quick bow of thanks and then tiptoed away, Kondo-san in tow. We had to get down off the mountain as quickly as possible. Just as I had finally managed to get Kondo-san moving at a decent pace, a shadow leapt out of the undergrowth to bar our way. I had a feeling you might be here. Uh, 
The shadow was none other than the demon Amagiri, companion of Kazuma. Yuki Murakun? Wasn't he with the Satsuma? Y yes Then we can no longer escape. As a man, I wish to take responsibility for this war and all the men that I've lost. Will you ask him to assist me with my suicide? Holy shit. P what? No, I can't let you die here. If you want to take responsibility for your loss, then you have to live so that you can take your revenge in the next battle. No, 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 I'm not doing that. <laughs> Amagiri had remained silent for our short exchange, but now he spoke up. Yes, I serve the Satsuma Domain, but I have given no orders regarding the Shinsugumi. My only business here is with the girl. Me? He nodded. Mm. Kazuma is vexed by you. And the young man, Hijikata. He disregards the wishes of the Domain and does as he pleases, not as he has ordered. The Satsuma Domain is... troubled. However, we do not care to cut our ties with the Satsuma Domain... yet. Amagiri's eyes promised violence and his body tightened, ready to make good on that promise. For that reason, Shizuru Yukimura, you must die here. Uh, he had no weapon, but I knew just how powerful he was, even without one. Had I been carrying the finest sword ever made, he still could have ended my life easily. Nonetheless, I would not be killed without a fight, no matter how futile that fight may prove to be. I drew my sword. Kondo-san, go! This man is after me and only me. You must escape. B but... I'll be fine. I have a sword and he has no weapons at all. Please, the Shinsengumi needs you. You can't abandon them. Kondo-san's mouth hung slack for a moment, struck speechless. Then he shut it, set his jaw, and drew his sword. No. No matter the reason, an honorable warrior cannot run away and leave a woman to fight alone. Kondo-san, what are you saying? I'm under orders from Hijikata-san. I have to protect you, please. But he would not be swayed. Nope. Kondo-san turned to face Amagiri. I am the chief of a defeated army. My recklessness has sent many of my men to their deaths. But I still can give my life to protect that of a woman. As a warrior? No. As a man, I cannot think of any better way to die. No! His face was calm and serene, and there was no hesitation in his eyes. I'd seen that look before on Inoue-san's face, just before he died under Kazuma's blade. There would be oh, no convincing him. <laughs> there would be no convincing him. His mind was made up. When he spoke, his voice rang with determination. I am Isami Kondo, chief of the Shinsugumi. Yeah. <laughs> Did not even like that. Yeah. <laughs> His sword held high, he charged towards Amagiri. By the way, we're just laughing at Discord being a, a shit. Yeah. Because he doesn't like loud things. Even if I was in the same room, things would be different. Then chat could actually hear it. Yeah. But you're not. I know. Uh, Discord, it, even if you turn off the thing for Discord that filters out stuff, it will still cut it out. Yeah. So, unfortunately, y'all gotta stick with my screams. Thanks, Crisp. <laughs> Crisp. 
Yeah, that's the thing that... Noise suppression powered by crisp. It's with a K. Huh. And even if you turn it off. Anyway. No! He was going to die just like Inoue's son had. I buried my face in my hands, overcome with despair and helplessness. You chow. You're ch you challenging me without knowing that you cannot win for the sake of someone who cannot defend themselves. Your actions are worthy of respect. Amagiri's hands rested calmly at his sides, even as Kondo-san charged towards him. <clears throat> at the last moment, he slid aside as if he were made of water. He grasped Kondo-san's blade with his left hand and drove his right into the other man's stomach. That I felt that. Thank you, controller. Yeah. I don't think he heard that. And I heard some of it. As Kondo-san began to fall towards the ground, Amagiri flipped him around so that he landed on his back hard. I've knocked most of the air out of him. Uh, I've uh, knocked most of the air out of him. He won't be able to move for a while. He glanced down at Kondo-san, groaning on the ground, then turned his eyes to me. Now you are next, Chizuru Yukimura. Do not blame me for what I must do. I took a deep breath and fixed my eyes on Amagiris. He had defeated Kondo-san with his bare hands. Even with my sword, it was foolish to think I could beat him. I knew that. But that didn't give me the right to turn tail and run just to save myself. Your sword cries. I can see that you are terrified of death. <sighs> he had seen straight through me. I felt my throat tighten. And I didn't hear it, but chat did. Wonderful. It came out as more of a scream of terror than a battle cry, but I charged towards him nonetheless. With about as much effort as it took for him to breathe, a Magidi sidestepped my attack. <gasps> he dodged, but he hadn't counterattacked. I couldn't give up just because my first strike hadn't hit. I lashed out again and again, but he bent and twisted away as if his body were made of water. None of my blows came even close to landing. Then finally... <laughs> I hadn't I even... Thing that time. <laughs> I hadn't even seen his leg move until it slammed into my sword arm with the force of a cannonball. <laughs> my vision went white with pain and my sword tr tumbled from my suddenly slack grip. <laughs> With a choked moan of agony, I slid to the ground. No, I had to get up. My brain screamed at me to move, to pick up my sword and fight, but the roar of pain drowned it out. This, ba this battle is concluded. Do not fear. It will be quick. Then you will hurt no longer. <laughs> I ground my teeth in anger and pain even as I felt hot tears spring to my eyes. I'm sorry, Hijikata-san. I thought to myself. You told me to protect Kondo-san. You told me to survive. But in the end, I couldn't do anything right. I squeezed my eyes shut as the tears slid down my cheeks and waited for the blow to fall. Giving up so easily. A real Shinjigumi warrior doesn't stop fighting until they're dead. The only thing on your mind right now should be how you're going to outthink this chump. Wait a minute, who said that? You should know. <laughs> that voice. It couldn't be. My head shut up just in time to see Hijikata-san limp through the air. I was right! And land a sword blow on Amagiri's arm. Mm. You... Thought I don't th only thought I'd be fighting the Imperial Army out here. Guess I'll be taking care of a demon too. 
Yet you got the sun stood before us, his hair pure white. His red eyes shone with desire for battle, and they were fixed on Amagiri. Battle with Kazuma cheats you nothing? A fury with a, is a mere echo of a true demon. No matter how powerful you may think of yourself, you cannot defeat us. Never know till you try. You know, they say if you're trying to fight a swordsman barehanded, you must be you have to be as three times as good as he is. I see. Only bloodshed will satisfy you. Very well. I shall be your opponent. He gave Hichikatsu son a short, pol polite bow and dropped himself easily into his ready stance. Hichikata Izumi no Kami Kanesada flickered through the air. Little more than a streak of sli silver. Fuck! <laughs> Anybody to say sliver? Sliver. That is sli sliver. <laughs> no, sliver. It's a sliver. Oh. Silver. Sil oh my god. Also, I actually said kind of sounded perfect with this time. What the fuck? Yeah. Amagiri blocked with one hand and dodged away from the flickering blade. What? Before Hijikatsu-san could react, Amagiri's foot drove itself into his stomach. Yeah. Hijikatsu-san's face twisted in pain, and he staggered back a step. Perhaps it was his fury-born strength, or perhaps it was simply adrenaline, but he surged back and leapt towards Amagiri. <laughs> his sword leapt forward to bury itself into Amagiri's chest. Blood spread it out, splashing across Hijikata-san's face. <sighs> he jerked back, pulling his sword free. No sooner was it out than the wound began to close. Right. You guys heal quick, don't you? So it's straight through the heart or not at all, huh? Guess it would be too easy otherwise. His sword shone with fresh blood. Looks like a pretty clean blade to me. Damn. I've got you figured, though. I know how you move. You're tough, but you're not impossible. Drenched in blood, Hijikata-san looked more like a monster than a human being. His eyes were wide and hungry, and there was something terrifying and inhuman about his expression as he whipped his sword through the air. <laughs> Amagiri leapt back, Hijikata-san's sword almost catching his fingers as he did so. Jabs and berries, feints and counterfeints, the battle flowed back and forth between them like a living thing. It's change is moving too fast for any mortal eyes to track. Neither man showed any signs of tiring, even as they dodged and attacked in ways that would have been unthinkable to any human. Even in the middle of that maelstorm of death and violence, I could see Hijikata-san smiling. I could see Hijikata-san smiling. The smell of blood hung heavy in the air, and his grin spoke of a furious lust for death. They left apart and regarded one another for several long moments before Amagiri spoke. I never imagined that a fury could match me in battle. You are unexpected. That power of yours. What will you do with it? What? Hijikata-san's tone was a mixture of surprise and disdain. Protect those I care for. What other reason could there be for wanting power? Those you care for. Would you count the Togagawa Shogunate amongst that number? No, this is bigger than the Shogunate. They don't even compare. Hmm. Amagiri closed his eyes and was silent. What had gotten into him? Why had he stopped fighting? Then, this was the perfect time to strike. I reached down slowly and picked up the sword I dropped only min minutes before. Cheese it! I made to move forward when a hand on my shoulder stopped me. Stay back. But, but, he 
Shikata's son is going to... That demon no longer thirsts for blood. This battle is over. What? I turn back to Hichikata son and the demon. Demon. Demons are not meant to involve themselves in the world of humans. Now that you have become a fury, you belong in the shadows as well. Yeah, I know that. I'm not interested in my name being in the history books. Well, if you understand that, then I shall leave the rest to you. What? He is proud even for a demon. If you have indeed humiliated him, I doubt he will ever forgive you. It is unlikely that you will defeat him. However, there is something if there is something that you wish to protect. Then please use that power you have been granted to do so. Hmm. In his own stoic way, Hishikata san looked as confused as I felt. Could Amagini be trusted? What were his true intentions? His boss is getting on his last fucking nerves, is what it is. There is one more thing I must tell you. The power of the Furies is not magic, nor is it a gift from the gods. Great strength, lightning speed, mortal wounds that seem to close themselves. That power was already within you. But had you stayed human, you would have spent it in decades, not minutes. You are only borrowing these things. Uh, my hands flew to my mouth. By borrowing? Did he mean that when Hijikata-san used the speed and strength of a fury, he was picking away at his future? His life? So you're saying that every time I use this stuff, my life gets a little shorter? Yes. He nodded gravely, and Hijikata-san gave him a bitter smile. Huh. <laughs> well, that makes sense. Seemed too good to be true. I guess it's only natural that I'd have to trade something for this kind of power, huh? And with no greater protest than that bitter smile, Hijikata-san accepted the greatest cost of becoming a Fury. Furies! Their incredible strength and power are balanced by the fact that they use... that the use of these abilities shortens their lifespan significantly. Then I will be on my way. Hold on. I want to ask you something. And that is? You want... You sure you want us to get away? If you don't kill me now, then I'm pretty sure I'll end up killing your pal, Kazuma. Amagiri shrugged, his face impassive. If you defeat him, then that was all he amounted to. We demons are not sentimental. You say that! <laughs> then, with a last polite nod, he disappeared into the night. <sighs> His enemy gone at last, Ichikata-san slumped and took a long, deep breath. He... Ichikata-san, are you alright? Yeah, I'm fine. Where's Kondo-san? Over there. Hijikata-san nodded and ran over to the chief. Kondo-san, are you okay? Are you hurt? Mm. He looked as if he had seen a ghost. Hijikata-san stood before him. Stood? <laughs> stood before him. His white hair and red eyes bright in the moonlight. A fury. Toshi, you? Oh. Hijikata son started, uh, stared. What? 
he started to say something. <laughs> I, but, I then looked, but then he looked away almost guiltily. I guess I think it's supposed to be stared. If you got son stared and then looked away almost guiltily. Gonasan stared at him for a moment before asking in a soft, stunned voice. Are you... a fury? Uh... Yeah. I didn't have a choice, alright. It was for the Shinsengumi. For a moment, he sounded very composed. But as I peered closer, I realized that he was desperately avoiding Gondosan's gaze. He couldn't bear to look his friend in the eye. We were silent for several moments, and when the first raindrop hit me, it took me by surprise. Oh, looks like it's starting to rain. We need to get back to Edo and start reorganizing. We need to discuss our next move. Right. Come on, Kondo-san. We have to hurry. I turned to make sure Kondo-san was following, but he simply stood there, as if he'd forgotten how to walk. Kondo-san? Is something wrong? It began to rain harder, and still Kondo-san didn't move. Rain ran down his cheeks to his chin. Or were they tears? What? What have I been doing? Today, I sent young men, men who trusted me, into battle. They died. And I made you. A man I've known for years. Into a fury. A monster. Kondo? What is this? No one blames you. It doesn't matter how great of a tactician you are. Swords cannot defeat guns. I made bad calls too at Toha Fushimi and Gen and Yamazaki killed. Battle of Toba Fushimi, by the way. That? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm just, I'm just, see that red text, all right? I know. I feel like they should have put a shadow behind it, but, uh... No. <laughs> no. A battle between Imperial and Shogunate forces that lasted for four days during January of 1868. Skirmishes occurred in Kamitoga, Shimotoba, Takeda, and Fushimi in southern Kyo. And it got Gen and Yamazaki killed. Defeat is in the past. We can't change it now. What we can do is turn this around and win the next time. Right? Besides, I don't regret becoming a fury. Hell, I'm stronger and faster than I ever was. Now you can use that to help you out. Nothing could make me happier than that. Rain poured down their faces. Surely it was my imagination, but for a moment, it almost looked as though hijikata son was crying. Kondasan stared at him for a long moment, then finally drew himself up. I... I apologize. I was being foolish. Forget what I said. Something in his voice told me that even he didn't quite believe that. Chapter 6! Yeah. March 1868. Oh. I would like to point out our Kofu Haruka gets mad at kondo -san many, 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 many times. <laughs> like, seriously. We returned to Edo and met up with Nagakura and the rest of our forces at the Hatsumoto Mansion. 
Going to someone's dis... Discon disconsolated? Disconsolate? That's... Yeah. Disconsolate from That's... his first battle, last battle. La 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 la. More so than most of the captains had expected. Even after he returned to headquarters, he spent most of his time moping. Yoshinobu, the supreme commander of the Shogunate army, was ordered out of the imperial court and into house arrest at the Kane, Ka, Kane Temple in Ueno. Kane Temple, the head temple of Tendai B Buddhism in the Kanto region. It is where several Tokugawa shoguns are buried. It is located in Ueno. We'll get to know Ueno, I think. The imperial court was now in the hands of the Satsuma and the Choshu, and it was becoming painfully clear that the loyalist faction was in a numerically untenable, untenable position. <sighs> Sometime later, I was sweeping the entrance when I looked up to see Saito-san on his way out. Oh, Saito-san, are you off to work? Have a good day. When you have a moment, could you make some of your delicious tea and take it to the commander? Without even waiting for me to respond, he gave a curt nod and was off. Saito-san had never been talkative, but lately he'd seem exceptionally tac tac taciturn? Taciturn? Taciturn. Taciturn. Perhaps he was still upset over what had happened. Um, are you guys really leaving? Yeah, yeah, it wasn't easy. But we made up our minds. Our path is at Kondo-san's. I don't think we can follow him anymore. Oh, it's going to be lonely here without you. What are you going to do now? Uh, well, we still haven't figured that out yet. We'll still be taking it to the Imperial Army. That's not going to change. Huh? Yeah, I'm sure you'll be hearing stories in a couple of months about how we killed a hundred rebels apiece. Heck, probably a couple of weeks. Well, take care. Okay. You too. We'd been so close. It was sad to see them go. Then again, I had only known them a few years. How sad that departure had to be for Kondo san, Ijikata san, and Saito san, who'd known them much, much longer. Okata san's condition worsened, and he'd been moved to a separate house in Sendagaya. Oh God, Sendagaya! One by one, our friends from Shie Hall were disappearing. Shie Hall, a dojo in Edo that taught the Tenen Rinshin style. Its owner was Isami Kondo, a fourth generation head. Many Shinsengumi members studied or lived there. Why had it come to this, I wondered. Cleaning, cleaning suddenly felt particularly pointless. I decided to go make some tea and see if hichikata san was in his room. hichikata san I brought you some tea. I opened the door as I spoke and stopped halfway in when I saw Sanan and Heske. Sanan san and Heske. Hey, hey, he's here. Yeah. All three faces were set in hard lines. Whatever I had interrupted, it was serious. I I'm so sorry. I didn't realize you were in the middle of a meeting. Take a drink, everybody. Yeah. Many sippy sippies. Yes. I began to back away as quickly as I could when... You can stay. His words froze me in place, but before I could reply, Sanonson spoke. You can't possibly be serious about this. 
Why would you cancel the augmentation of the Fury Corps? I am serious. There won't be any more Furies. Make do with what you have. I'm sorry, but I cannot support your decision. The Shinsukumi's manpower is at an all-time low. It seems to me that expanding the Fury Corps should be a top priority. Heisuke told me that Nagakura-san and Hanada-san have left. That is a serious blow to us, Hijikata-san. The Sansei referred to this to a son of Kun. I think it's Kun. Uh, that's a good question. I need to bring up the thing, <laughs> don't I? Yeah. Cause Honorifics, ho! Where are the honorifics list? Pretty sure it's Kun because they're all younger than him. I will know in just a, a moment. second. Honorifics list. Where are you? Uh, so I think it's it says same as uh, addresses everyone as same as above. What? Oh, yeah. Wow. Now I'm gonna go look at the list. Honorifics. Load, please. Sorry, folks. This is just going to take a second. It's going to bother me. <laughs> uh... Sim mm -mm -mm. Oh, same as a... <clears throat> so, if they're older, is son. If they're younger, is Kun. So since all the captains are younger than him, it's Kun. Okay. Heisuke told me that Nagakuda-kun and Hadada-kun have left. That is a serious blow to us, Hijikata-san. Even if we can recruit more warriors, they'll be just they'll just be more rabble. As soon as they sit, they're sent into battle, they'll flee. Wasting our energy on men like that is foolish. Don't you think that it would be better to concentrate our efforts on expanding and improving the Furies? Uh, uh. Heisuke looked down at the floor. He'd said nothing since I'd arrived, but it was clear from his face that, Fury or not, he didn't always agree with Sun on Sun. You do have a point. If all we do want to do is increase our strength, then the fastest way to do that is to focus on the Fury Core. Then why do you... There's a problem with the Furies. A big one. And we've only recently just found out about it. Our source just is reliable. He uh, meant to tell Sanansan what he'd learned from Amagiri. The power of, of a fury comes from your, I guess you could say, potential. Basically, the more you use it, the, short, the shorter your life becomes. What? Sonansan's eyes, usually so cool and calculating, went wide as saucers behind his glasses. Uh, yeah. We shouldn't be using the Furies unless we really have to. <sighs> the color had drained from his face. <sighs> Silence filled the room for several long seconds before Sun and Sun finally raised his head and spoke. Then that is yet another reason why our research should continue. Whoa, what the fuck? I slammed my fist on my desk. Uh, yeah, thanks. That was a loud bang. <laughs> and I f it is a flaw, yes. And a serious one. But with more research, we may be able to find a way to circumvent it, or even counteract it entirely. As a fury yourself, surely you understand the necessity... Ichikata-san's expression didn't change. This is not a request, Sanan. This is an order. 
As your commander, I am telling you that research on the Furies will stop. Then there will be no more Furies. <sighs> Sun on Sun said nothing. Instead, he simply glared at Hijikata san as seconds stretched into minutes. Let's go, Sanan. He sat on moving for a few more moments until at last he sagged, defeated, and turned to Heske. Very well. Sanan -san and Heske had turned to leave the room when. Oh, Kondo san! What are you doing here? Going somewhere? Uh, no. Uh, just, uh. Out for a walk. Don't mind me, I'm just passing by. I heard them exchange a few short pleasantries in the hallway, and then three sets of footsteps faded away. The room grew awkwardly silent. Asia got us on side and let his gaze drift out the window. The, the tea's cold now. I'll go pour you a new one. No. I stood to leave this desperate to be away from that room and its stifling atmosphere. No, this is fine. I'm thirsty. Cold tea's perfect. He took a sip inside again, quietly, a distant look in his eyes. The workload he'd taken on was tremendous, and he was tired all day, every day, but he looked drained, more so than those than those things could account for. How hard had Nagakura-san and Hanada-san's departure hit him? He's right about Senpachi and Hanada leaving. That hurt, uh, that hurt us. Bad. His voice shook almost imperceptibly. <sighs> imperceptibly, blubber. Then his mouth curled into a bitter smile as he spoke. Well, I had a feeling that this might happen one day. It's our own fault for sh it's our fault for falling short of what they wanted. If what we're fighting for and what they're looking for aren't the same thing, then why wouldn't they leave? There's no need to let feelings or loyalty tie you down. It's all over now, and it's fine. They'll be all right on their own. So will we. Um, I got the feeling that Hijikata-san's words were more for himself than for me. But damn. We sure have lost a lot of people. Things are... different. His eyes were focused on something far away. And his voice had dropped a little more than a, to a little more than a mumble. I couldn't even imagine what was going through his head. To be a leader and command the loyalty and obedience of tens or hundreds of men was something I couldn't begin to understand. Every night he worked until the sun came up. It was painful for the Furies to be up and about during the daylight hours, but that didn't stop Hijikata-san. Every day... He met represent representatives of the Shogunate. Even I could see the horrible toll he was taking on his body. What could I do for him? Uh, I think it's tell him to rest. Tell him to stop. Oh! Well then. Please, Shikata-san. You have to stop. His eyes snapped back into focus and swiveled to stare into mine. What? His voice was much harder than I'd expected, and it gave me pause. No, I thought to myself. This was something I had to say. I'm only telling you to do what you told Sun on Sun to do a few minutes ago. Don't use your fury abilities unless it's an emergency. His eyes narrowed. Why should I listen to you? 
Um, well... His glare was unnerving. Well... Well... Oh. <laughs> well, you became a fury because... Because you were protecting me from Kazuma. If you hadn't had to fight a demon, then you'd still be a human now. You wouldn't have had to... This again? <clears throat> Look, I told you I chose to do this. Nobody forced me to. Stop worrying about that stuff. He sounded quite calm and nonchalant, as if he'd already accepted his approaching death. But was that really true? Or only an act he'd put on to ease my mind? Who could ever be at peace with bargaining away their life? No matter what sort of power such a bargaining might grant them. When you say things like that, it just makes it worse. If you're in pain, please just say so. Can't you just tell me the truth? Don't you wish you'd never become a fury? For a moment, the room was silent. And then Hijikaza-san began to laugh. <laughs> Man, I just can't win with you, can I? Huh? You really are an Edo girl, aren't you? Uh, I was rather stunned. Laughter and levity certainly hadn't been the reaction I'd expected. I uh, think I've told you this before, haven't I? Anyway, I'm the youngest kid in my family. They're farmers in Tama. My mom and dad both died whenever I was young. That meant my sister, who's about four years older than I am, had to raise me. Well, this is a familiar story. You sound just like her. Soji's seat's sister, Mitsu, sounds the same way. When you go off, it's like I'm getting scolded by my family. Makes me feel like I've got to listen to you. Really? I never heard him talk about his childhood like this before. It felt... surreal. If what Amagiri told us is true, then so long as I don't use my fury powers, I'll be fine. Right? If it gets bad, I'll tell you. Stop worrying about me. He'd likely still keep most of his pain to himself. That was just who he was. But if he really meant that he would tell me when it became unbearable... Alright. I understand. I took his word for it this time. So... Um, what will the Shinsengumi be doing now? Well, we're going to need to get Kondo back on his feet first. But after that, we plan on heading north. North? He nodded yeah. slowly. Right now, the Shogun is about as useful as tits on a bull, but we still got the northeast. If Aizu and Sendai can hold the center, then we've got a, still got a chance. I... That's a phrase. <laughs> That's a phrase. <laughs> That's a phrase, localization team. Of all things. Uh, Ma Matsumoto Sensei is rounding up some men, weapons, and ammunition for us at Na Nagareyama. We'll meet up there, then head for Aizu. Oh no, it's Nagareyama time. Even if the rebels manage to take Edo, they, they'll probably have to fall back to Kyoto eventually. And once, whenever they do that, then we can take Edo pretty. Suddenly his body twisted and hunched, <clears throat> and he grasped a hand to his shoulder, his suddenly heaving chest, lips... <sighs> <sighs> 
Ichikata-san's eyes bulged from his head in pain, and he'd begun to sweat, hundreds of tiny beads appearing all over his face. I Ichikata-san, what's wrong? He only shook his head, unable to speak through his pain. Uh. I'd seen him like this before. Is it the bloodlust? <clears throat> He didn't respond, but I'd known I was right even as I asked. I... Give him some blood. Give him some blood! Hishikata-san was in pain. I had no other choice. With steady hands, I pulled my sword from its scabbard and laid the edge against my fingers, ready to cut. But Hishikata-san's hand was on my wrist, stopping me. Why? The pain will go away if you drink blood. I tried to pull away, but he held fast and shook his head. I'll do it. Just sit still. He moved around behind me and loosened my collar. I felt the cool air touch my neck, followed by Hijikata-san's fingers. He was looking for a place to make the cut. A moment later, later, a <laughs> letter, a moment letter. <laughs> letter, a moment later, I felt the kiss of the cold blade against my skin, and then without a sound, I felt it sink in. I bit my lip at the pain, but said nothing. Om nom 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 nom. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Why do you like this? <laughs> God damn it. Ah, okay. Uh, well, that's a moment right there. Yep. What are you doing, by the way? Uh, gay slinky. Oh, that's what the sound is. Yep. It's the slinky. The rainbow slinky that I want. <laughs> his warm lips touched the cut on my neck and then I felt his face press against me as he began to drink again and again he drank as thirsty as a man who had been stranded in the desert <laughs> fuck off I could feel his breath on my skin it made me shiver Never before had I been so close to a man. Nerves made my body begin to twist until Hichikata-san's hands grabbed my shoulders. When he spoke, his voice was low and husky. Don't turn around. Uh, okay. I suddenly I realized suddenly that he didn't want me to see him in his fury state. Those few words, a last strained defense of his wounded pride, tore at my heart, and I felt a lump rise in my throat. For his sake, I did my best to calm my breathing, rapid from nerves and excitement. Though I did my best to hide it, there was no denying that my heart was beating faster and faster. I'm oh, sorry. I just can't afford to lose it right now. Was he saying that to convince me, or to convince himself? Yes. <laughs> what the fuck is Who the fuck is texting you? Oh, uh, um, what? just, uh, Twitch notifications. <laughs> okay. Of course, I understand. You don't have to hold back. I want to help in whatever way I can. The day that I watched Inoue-san and Yamazaki-san die, I felt a horrible, torturous regret. There had been nothing I could do for them. Ever since, I cursed myself for being unable to help the Shinsengumi after they sheltered and protected me for so long. But now, at last, there was something I could do. I could ease Hichikata-san's thirst. 
I felt his grip on me tighten. Emotion washed over me. Guilt, disappointment, anger, regret. And I realized they were Hishikata sons. There's a car outside going by with loud ass music. Oh, loud music. Oh no. Yeah, like I could feel the fucking bass. Do, 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 do. <laughs> His hands were warm. Eventually, he let go slowly and stepped away. His breathing had returned to normal, and there was color in his face again. With the back of his hand, he wiped the last of the blood from his lips and sighed with relief. Sorry for doing that to you. Uh, oh no, it's, it's nothing, see? The cut's already closed up. I shrugged my collar back up to my neck and smiled. I'll be staying here for quite a while. So if you ever need me, please just let me know. You're telling me I could just drink your blood whenever? Mm. I nodded and he gave me a crooked smile. Oh, you shouldn't say things like that, kid. Someone's gonna use you up and throw you away. It was only joking, and I knew it. But there was a part of me that felt if it was Hijikata-san who used me up, then maybe it wasn't really so bad. That is a line, Chizuru. Sometime after that incident, we moved again to the Kaneko Mansion in Nagareyama. Kaneko, a resident used by the Shinsengumi as its garrison before it's advanced on Nagareyama. Kondo-san had become reluctant to go into battle, but after several talks with Hichikata-san, he was eventually convinced otherwise. Until we finished our preparations for our journey to Aizu, we would be training in Nagareyama. I was told Saito-san was off in some place called Ichikawa, where he would be training to use the new... The... Mm, he would be training in the use of new modern armaments. Armaments. Armament. Armament. Ichikawa, where the remnants of the Shogun army regrouped after escaping from Edo. Sanon and Heisuke had left with the Fury Corps along, along the Utsunomiya route to Aizu, since they couldn't go to the Kaneko Mansion. Ever since we'd arrived, Kondo-san had seemed like an entirely different person, listless and without any kind of drive. His days were spent in his room, reading books, or on the porch, staring at flowers. It was easy to see that he was depressed about his loss at Kofu. Eventually, he would get over it and go back to his normal, cheerful self. Or at least, that was what we all hoped. Kondo-san, I brought you some tea. I set down the tea and snacks I brought on his reading table. Thank you. He paused in the act of flipping a page to smile up at me. What are you reading? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm reading the Romance of the Three Kingdoms and the bio biography of the Kiyomase. Military history, basically. Romance of the Three Kingdoms. We should be familiar with this story, like, so much. There have been many video games about it. Including Three Houses. Yes. A novel describing the turbulent period of Chinese history that made that began in the late Han Dynasty and lasted for nearly a hundred years, known as the Three Kingdoms era. Inexplicably popular in Japan. It was also used for... Well, I don't know if it was used for genealogy, but the fact that G Three Houses drew from it made me think of genealogy. I mean, they... I think genealogy is what they drew a lot of things from, including the crusts and the time skippy. But also Dynasty Warriors! Bi biography of Kiyomasa. A biography of Kiyomasa Kato, a general from the Warring States period. Which I don't know much of, but I should learn at some point. 
I practically know them by heart by now, but every time I read them, I find something new to be fascinated by. When I was young, I wanted to be just like Kansei Taken, a legendary warrior. I wanted to fight for someone other than myself. Kansei Taken, the deification by the people of Guangyu, the highly revered, revert, re revered general who served the Chinese Emperor Liu Bei of Shu, one of the three kingdoms. Not sure if I said that correctly. I'm not going to attempt again. His grin made his face look like that of a little boy. But after a moment, the grin faded. But I guess dreaming about being a great commander doesn't make you one. Wish I'd realized that a little earlier. We shut the book softly and set it down on the top of his desk. What are you talking about? You've only just begun. But he didn't even seem to hear me. How's Toshi? But I think he's up in his room writing something. Probably orders for Saito-san. He's off in Ichikawa right now, you know. Kondo-san's head sagged towards his chest. Oh. I keep giving Toshi so much to do. I don't think he's pushing himself too hard. And nothing makes him happier than being able to help you out. That's just the kind of guy he is. Kondo son laughs. <laughs> you really turned out to be quite an asset to him, haven't you? I think you know him quite well by now. Y you think so? He seemed quite serious about it, and I felt my cheeks getting warm. That... oh. That's right. I saw it. <laughs> That's right. Back when I first got here, I was supposed to be his... page, or something. Ah, oh, yes. I never thought you'd be here for so long, to be honest. Before I knew it, we were reminiscing about the time we'd spent in Kyo. Back then... We never could have guessed that the Satsho Alliance would take control of the Imperial Court. Okta had been healthy, anyway, yet Mazaki-san had still been alive, and Nagakura-san ha Nagakura hadn't left. Had break-ins in a minute and a half. Hooray! Every day was fun and exciting. But I know things would still work out. Jigata-san will get us through this. He responded with a melancholy laugh. Don't you think you're asking for quite a bit of him, Yuki Murakun? Mm? Oh, what do you mean? Before he could answer, the door slid open with a snap, and Ichikata-san and Shimada-san ran in, their faces tense and drawn. <clears throat> Ichikata-san? What happened? We gotta go. Now. The mansion's surrounded. Ichikata-san was out of breath. They must have been running. What? There are two, maybe three hundred of them out there. We came in through the back so they wouldn't spot us. If there were only twenty or thirty of them, then maybe we could take them. Ichigo the son worked his lip and glanced out the window, frustrated and tense. Don't have t time to call back Saito and his men. Guess we'll have to come up with something from here. Shimada, Chizuru, you two take Kondo and head, go on ahead. What? Uh, Hijikata-san, not even you can take on that many people. And it's... it's daytime out there. I won't know if I... I won't know till I try. Hijikata, the soldiers out there are all riflemen. Both Shimano and I moved towards the door in an effort to physically stop Hijikata-san if it came to that. Kondo-san had stayed silent and com contemplative since Hijikata-san and Shimada-san had entered, but now he finally spoke. <clears throat> Wait, Toshi, you don't have to do that. 
I'll go have them take me to their headquarters. Ishikata-san's expression cycled quickly from shock to disbelief to anger. What the hell? You might as well just paint a target on your chest. I wouldn't introduce myself as Kondo the Shinjigumi, of course. I'll just tell them we're Hamato. Hatamato. And we're here to secure this location. That ought to get, make them think about it for a bit. At any rate, I should buy enough time for you guys to get out of way. Shimada-san and I were both shocked into silence. But not Hijikata-san. He ha Kondo has the happiest face in the world right now. Listen to yourself. You think they'll just let you waltz in and fuck with them like that? You saw how they worked back in Kyo? There's no way in hell these bastards don't hate our guts. They won't believe that crap about us being Hatamoto for a second. Well, even if I do get captured, I have to stand as a... A, they can't just kill me. What the fuck is this sentence? I don't know, but what the... Oh, uh, Daimyo? I have the status of a Daimyo, they can't just kill me. What happened uh, here? Uh, Game? <laughs> Localization team? Um, A wonderful, a uh, powerful samurai who ruled a fi five, five? It's supposed to be field them, I think. Field them? Oh my yeah. god, this one is messed up more than we thought. A powerful summer who ruled a few of them and commanded vassals of his own. They served the Shogun directly. Itch. Itchy. <sighs> Itchy hand. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. You think they'll give a shit about a title you got from the old Shogun? You go out there. You're signing your death warrant. You really think I'll just let you go do that? Look! I'm a fury now! So long as they don't shoot me through the heart, I will be fine! No matter what Hijikata-san said, Kondo-san's expression didn't change. He only gazed back at him, his expression cool and placid. <laughs> that was a yawn. <laughs> I've made my decision. Nothing you can say convince- Nothing you can you say can convince me otherwise. Hijikata-san began to shake. In all the time I'd been with the Shinsengumi, I'd never seen Hijikata-san and Kondo-san act like this before. Usually it was Hijikata-san who kept a cool head and Kondo-san who succumbed to his emotions. But this time... No! No! What the hell is the Shinsengumi going to do without its chief? You're coming with me even if I have to knock you out and drag you! You have a responsibility to the Shinjigumi. You don't get to die and run away like that. Hijikata-san was screaming at Kondo-san, his white knuckled fist gripping the front of the other man's kimono, and his eyes red with held back tears. Oh. But his fury and pleas broke across Kondo-san's impassable calm like so much wind against a mountain. This is a direct order. You will go to Ichikawa to meet with the rest of our men. And Yukimura-kun and Shimada-san will go with you. Ichikata-san stumbled back a step, shocked by the force of Kondo-san's voice. You're going to tell me what to do? What the hell is this? His eyes were still dry, but his voice trembled. Aren't you, aren't your chief's orders absolute? You've ordered plenty of men to kill themselves or become furious from disobeying that rule, but somehow you are an exception? Isn't that the sort of warrior you want to be? Is that the sort of warrior? Is that the sort of warrior you want to be? <sighs> Ishikata-san said nothing. As long as he'd been commander, 
Ijikata-san had strove to, strove to lead by example. He had lived by the code and demanded that others do likewise, so that the Shinsengumi might have true samurai. No doubt Kondo-san had counted on that fact. He meant to use it to keep Ijikata-san alive. Shimada-san, Yukimura-kun, I want you to leave with Toshi. If you take too long, they'll attack. My surrender will have meant nothing. He gave Shimada-san and me a little shove to get us moving. Shimada-san turned to look at Hijikata-san. For a moment, he'd said nothing. Commander. Let's go. Ijikata-san didn't move. He only stood, chewing at his lip, until Kondo-san laid his hands on his friend's shoulders and gave him a warm smile. Hey, Toshi. Let it go. Let me go. You've run yourself ragged trying to earn me the status of fame that I wanted. You even turned yourself into a fury. It kills me to see you do all these things for me. I'm not worth it. He got the sun, didn't look up. I'm not worth it. He looked rapidly, trying to hold back tears and stared desperately at the floor. Then he swallowed, and when he spoke, his voice was tight and strained. I... If I do this... Then what will I have been fighting for all these years? What? I became a warrior to serve our country. I have won battles and killed men. All because I thought you would be there in the end to celebrate with us. You sound just like Kondosun had after the Battle of Kofu Castle. I'm sorry. I brought you here. I did this to you. When I think about it now, it was all a sort of dream. We weren't real samurai, but we strapped on our swords and went to work for the Imperial Court. His voice was warm, but it seemed that very kindness made it even harder for hijikata son. He took a deep breath and squeezed his eyes shut willing the tears to go away. The room was silent for a few long moments before he finally spoke. Shimada, send a message to our remaining men. We need to secure an escape route. Yes, sir. Chizuru, stay here. Once we're ready, I will come and get you. All right. With that, Hijikata-san and Shimada-san left, and Kondo-san and I were alone. He reached into his kimono and pulled something out. Oh no, Yukimura-kun, take this with you. He handed me a small cloth bag. It clinked as he laid it in my hand. What is this? Money. To help you escape, I wasn't able to do anything for you. This is a token of my appreciation for all you've done for us. Please, take it. <sighs> How could he be so kind when his situation was so grim? His warmth still lingered in the, on the bag as I took it. I felt a lump rise in my throat. You still have time. I'll tell Toshi. Once you get away, go more some go somewhere safe and look for Matsumoto Sensei. I don't think they'd do anything too bad to a girl like you. Just forget you ever had anything to do with this. Marry a man you love, find a peaceful life. Find happiness. What should I say? I want to go with Hijikata-san. I want to go with Hijikata-san. 
I shook my head. No, I won't run. I want to go with Hijikata-san. I'm... I'm his page. I bit my lip, afraid that if I said any more, I might cry. Instead, I looked up at Gondo-san and did my best to smile. His eyes were warm as he looked down at me. I see. Toshi has been blessed with some great friends, hasn't he? I'll be counting on you, then. Take care of him for me. <sighs> I tried to respond, but the lump in my throat made any sort of speech impossible. Eventually, Hijikata-san and Shimada-san returned, and we left the Kaneko Mansion. I looked back over my shoulder many times as we ran, thinking about how, s how soon now, Gondo-san would be surrendering to his enemies. Perhaps, I thought to myself time and again, if we turn back now, we can still rescue him. There have to be ways all four of us can escape. Shimada-san seemed to feel the same way, but Hijikata-san never once turned to look back. Oh. We ran and ran through the forest to Ichikawa. It didn't matter how quickly we got there. It wouldn't be soon enough to bring back an army to save Kondo-san. We all knew that, but Hijikata-san didn't slow down. Are you alright, Yukimura-kun? I can carry you if you're feeling- if you're getting tired. I'm fine. I can keep going. Hijikata-san, his back to us, said nothing. But I could feel the pain that tore at him with every step he took away from Kondo-san. The sun had begun to dip towards the western horizon, and night had started to fall when- Hey, you! Stop there! Where are you headed? He was dressed in a simple western uniform. Hijikata-san only frowned and made to walk past the soldier. Hey! He, hey! He said stop! God damn it, are you not one of those shogun it guys? Wait, I've seen this guy before. That's it! He's Hijikatsu! Brother Shinsengumi! What? Shinsengumi? You mean those guys who ought Sakamoto? Oh god, that's still going around? As they began to scramble for their guns, I noticed a mark of the Tosa domain on their uniforms. Unfortunately, they weren't fast enough to beat hijikata -san. His hair snapped white and he shot towards the soldiers, Kanesada in hand. <laughs> Discord did not like that. Nope. <laughs> His strike was so fast and elegant that the eyes barely even had time to realize it had happened before two men fell dead to the ground. Wrong day to fuck with me, boys. What is this line? It is so bad. <laughs> it's just... Mm. A volley of gunfire erupted from the rest of the Imperial soldiers nearby. Yeah. I heard the wet thunk of bullets hitting Hijikata-san, and he stumbled, but almost immediately his wounds began to close. So that's how getting shot feels, huh? <sighs> Not as bad as I thought. This is nothing! This doesn't even come close to what Kondo's going through right now! Hijikata-san launched himself at the nearest of the f riflemen, his sword already in motion and his face twisted by grief and anger. There were only a few men, even without the powers of a fury. Hijikata-san and Shimada-san could have made short work of them. But rage and frustration had been boiling inside him ever since we'd left Kondo-san, and now they erupted in a torrent of violence. No! 
stop! Don't do this! He had to understand what he was doing. Shut up! Stay out of this, goddammit! He knew full well what he was doing, but he was past caring. Teji got the sun leapt from tree to tree, his sword flashing like lightning. Every time it moved, a life ended. Rage, anguish, and an unrestrained thirst for blood radiated out from him like heat from a fire. I could feel it, even from where I stood. Blood soaked his face, chest, and hands, and still he cut and cut, never satisfied. Mm. I saw Shimada-san mm. shiver out of the corner of my eye. I couldn't blame him. Ijikata-san looked as if he'd forgotten how to do anything but kill. Every mood he made drew blood, and every swing of his sword spilled a man out onto, a, onto the dirt. He looked like a monster. At last, the only person still alive was Hijikata-san himself. Silence fell over the, f the forest again. He turned to face us, every inch of skin slick with blood. Shimada, go see if there's any more of them. Uh, yes, sir! He disappeared into the forest, desperate to distance himself from the carnage. You, go with him. His voice was cold and rough, like stones grinding against one another. Normally, I would have immediately done as he asked and headed off into the forest after Shimada-san. But this time... What the hell? I gave you an order! His words cut like a knife, but I didn't move. I'm sorry, but I can't do that. I am your commanding officer. I am giving you an order! He sounded angry, as he often did, but behind that anger was a deep, miserable sadness. If he didn't stay angry, I felt he would probably cry. I promise I won't get in your way, but please just let me stay here with you! I knew there was nothing I could do for him, but neither could I bear to leave him alone. He turned his back to me, to everything. His face was hidden from me. But suddenly his tall back and broad shoulders seemed small, tired, and very, very lonely. What could I say to him? How could I make him feel better? I searched my soul for something, anything, that I, but I came up empty. After an inter... An inter interminable? Yeah. Interminable, miserable silence. He finally spoke. What the, the, the hell did I do all this for? How could this be the cared. the card. Mm. Mm. How could this be the card fate that dealt two men so honest and determined? It just didn't seem fair. Was it just so I could give Kondo to those bastards? I busted my ass to give my friend to the enemy? I was going to make him important. Help him carry all the way to the top. Kaisen Taken and Kiyomasa wouldn't have had anything on him. I wanted to see him fight in real battles. The kind they write about. I wanted to see him become a true warrior. I wanted to see just how far the, the, the elder of a dojo from the sticks and a farmer's son could go. His voice had begun to shake. I wasn't even sure he still knew I was there. If he did, it seemed he no longer cared. I thought we were shooting for the same dream. Long as it was for him, 
I felt like I could do anything. So what the hell am I doing here? Alive! While he's... He's... God knows how... What? After all that self-righteous preaching... What did I do? I turned around and left him to the wolves. Hell, I'm just like the Shogun! As soon as things got dangerous, I turned tail and left better men to deal with my last. God damn it, why am I alive? It tore me apart to hear him talk like that. I couldn't bear to just stand and listen. I wrapped my arms around him as far as they would go and pressed my face against his back. He said nothing. Kondosan said... I mean, after you'd left, I told him that you'd figure it out. And he said that I was asking too much of you. No, I told myself. You can't cry. Hijikata-san is in far more pain than you are. But to no avail. So the tears began to fall and I struggled ahead. I... I know how much you care about Kondo-san. But he did what he did because he feels the same about you. Don't you see? It's not your fault. You can't blame yourself! Kondo-san didn't want you to die. That's why you're still alive. He, he ordered you to leave. You didn't have a choice! Just... Please... Don't blame yourself. Hijikata-san listened, saying nothing. Or perhaps he didn't even hear me. Why did words feel so powerless when I needed them most? What good were they if I couldn't comfort someone I cared for when they needed it most? After several long minutes, I felt Ishikata-san relax. He did this to save me. But what the hell am I supposed to do without Isami Kondo or the Shinsengumi? The dream of him make of making him somebody important is what got me here. Now that that's gone, I don't have anything left. I'm nothing. He gave a short bark of laughter, but there was no humor in it. Seriously, Kondo-san. Stop giving me all the shitty jobs! I'm a soldier, not a handyman. Damn it! He choked back a <laughs> sob and fell silent. We met up with other shogun at Trips some time later in Ichikawa and decided to head to Nikko as remnants of the old fe feudal government. Nico refer to uh, refers to the Nico Tosh mm, Nico Tosho shrine where the remains of Ieyasu Tokugawa whose divine name is Tosho Daigogen Daigongen are entombed. Saitasun had been in Ichikawa for a while but he'd left earlier for Aizu to oversee the Fury Corps. I worried about what would happen to Kondo-san but perhaps because the situation seemed grim None of us ever th brought it up. Damn. Chapter 7. Chapter 7. I feel like this is where he and Cosma are about to clash. As soon as he could, Hijikata-san began to visit as many former vassals as he could finangle. Finangle was a word. As he could finangle audiences with. Requesting clemency for Kondo-san. He was busy day and night and hardly slept. 
In the end, though, the former vassals were weary of upsetting the imperial army and refused to outright and out or outright ignored Hijikatsu-san's pleas. On April 11th, the head of the Satsuma domain met with an ambassador from the shogunate. As a result of these negotiations, Edo Castle was surrendered to the imperial army. But the war was not over. We left Edo in advance of the negotiations to meet up with Denshu Company. <gasps> huh. I know what this means. Hijikata-san returned from his other engagements as we joined with Denshu Company and together we headed north. Shit, who's going to be the wingman? Huh? Sakta-san had taken the main body of the Sen Sengumi ahead to Aizu in order to keep an eye on the Fury Corps. We left Ichikawa and set off down the Niku ro ro route, route to Aizu. We finally managed to meet up with some allied soldiers, but many of them looked at us with a strange mixture of curiosity and fear. It was unpleasant. Shogunate soldiers were usually sons of wealthy Hadamoto families, but the men of the Shinsugumi had acquired a reputation as murderers and thugs. Many of the other soldiers looked at us uh, askance. I have askance. Askance. I have never seen this word in my life. Askance. Askance, okay. Oh. With an attitude or look of suspicion or disapproval. Okay. Hey, are those the shits of Gumi? The murderers? Yeah, and I heard a rumor that they're savages. They kill men for no reason. Even their own friends. Best not make eye contact. You never know what might set that sword off. It wasn't difficult to hear the gossip about us that had begun to travel the ranks. A bunch of gossipy old ladies. You want me to go set them up, sir? <laughs> Hold up. No. Gossipy old ladies. Hold up. That's yeah. a... That's something. No. They want to talk, let them talk. He sounded even more... Ir Irritated than usual. Um, Hishikata-san, are you alright? You don't look too well. Also, I realize at this point, I only have choose to divorce. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, this is one of the roots that uh, has others. I'm fine. You certainly didn't look it. His skin was a pale color, almost blue, and he looked as if he might collapse any moment. Marching during the day was hardly pleasant for a fury, and it was easy to see that Kondo-san was still foremost in his mind. I had to admit, he did have good reason to be on edge. Excuse me, would you let me pass? Uh, my apologies. Oops. Someone was moving towards us from the back of the column, pushing his way through the rest of the marching soldiers. Hello, are you Hichikata-san? I've heard a great deal about you and the Shinsugumi. Hichikata-san turned and gave the stranger a sneer that could have frozen a bonfire. Oh boy. <laughs> Who the hell are you? Oh, pardon rudeness. I haven't introduced myself yet. I am Keisuke Otohori, the uh, infantry magistrate. I command Denshu Company. Keisuke Otori, a man of humble birth. He studied Western gunnery and military strategy before joining the Shogunate Army. He was quickly promoted to vassal and then infantry magistrate. Infantry magistrate, a commanding position that presided over an infantry force. Here we have the man himself. It's yes, and I'm looking at his uh, Pokemon team right now, too. <laughs> what is Leave he? Meowstick and Peaky Peck. Yes! <laughs> Peaky Peck. It makes so much sense. Considering Heiji Kata is a uh, two cannon. <laughs> the two cannon eats the Peaky Peck alive. I'm sure I'll be talking with the Shinsugumi a great deal in the future. 
It's nice to meet you. He gave a friendly <laughs> laugh and extended his right hand. For a man who claimed to command infantry, he looked more like the son of a wealthy merchant than a soldier. Hijikata stared down at the hand as if he were, uh, as if it were a weak old fish. <laughs> oh, I forgot to. Oh, uh, I forgot to take my gloves off. He hurriedly plucked the glove off of his right hand and then thrust it towards Hijikata's son again. What? You want money or something? Oh, um, well, it's called shaking hands. You've never heard of it? That's how people greet one another in Europe. If Haruka was here in this situation, she'd absolutely slap the back of Otori's head. Like, you idiot. He's <laughs> <laughs> got the sun snorted under his breath and turned away. Otori left his hand out for a few moments longer before pulling his glove putting his pulling his blood back on silently. Blah blah blah. Uh, do you have some business with Hijikata san? Ah, uh, yes, that's right. Uh, I was hoping to hear some stories about Foba Fushimi from the commander of the Shitsugumi himself. Toba Fushimi. <laughs> Toba Fushimi from the commander of the Hi Shitsugumi himself. Hichikata-san frowned, and when he spoke, his voice was like acid. Ugh. <clears throat> Ugh. Sure, w you wouldn't have rather hear some ridiculous rumor from a drunken soldier? Seems like everybody here loves to gossip. Oh, I apologize for the men. We finished our training, but it appears that military discipline hasn't quite caught on just yet. He gave himself a little shake as if to clear his mind. At any rate, I came here to give you an overview of how our forces are being deployed. We've got 3,000 escaped soldiers from the former shogunate in the advance guard, main body, and rear guard. As the highest ranking officer here, I... Wait, you? You're telling me that you're in charge of all this? Well, yes, I suppose that's true. He just got to someone as if he just swallowed something rotten. <laughs> he only just lost his chief, and now Otori was trying to force himself, however oblivious, into Kondo-san's place. No one, no matter how skilled, could replace his friend. Still, Otori seemed to have expected to be rebuffed and continued, showing no sign of being put off by Hijikata-san's behavior. That's a first! Hey. The advance guard is made up of mostly men from the Kunawa and Aizu domains. The main body is my Denshu company, and the rear guard is compri composed primarily of men from the Shogunate's New World Army. New World Army, a small army made of Tokugawa vassals led by Soma and Fujinuma. Yeah. They were approximately 150 to 200 members. Thank you. I'm thinking of putting you in command of the advance guard. Uh, what do you think? Hijikata-san scowled. Mm. Why? I don't have much co actual combat experience. Uh, you do, so I figured you'd be better a fit for the job. Besides, there isn't anyone on our side or theirs who hasn't heard the name of Toshizo Hijikata. I can't think of anyone else better suited. Otori's copious praise did nothing to thought Hijikata-san, and they simply stared at one another for a few awkward moments. Well then, I suppose I'd better be on my way. We'll talk later, and go over some more in-debt plans. Their conversation ended as one-sided as it had begun, and Otori disappeared into the swarm of marching soldiers. Bye! Bye! Have a beautiful time! <laughs> Later that night, we camped a short distance away from the rest of the force. Hey, Shimada, son, cheese it is cute. Get over here. We need to talk. Shit, these are the only two members of the Shinsengumi that we know <laughs> that are here right now. 
The main bulk of the Shinsengumi, as well as the Fury Corps, were headed to Aizu under Saito-san's command. That meant that the only people in camp were myself, Shimada-san, and Hichikata-san, and about ten other Shinsengumi members. Oh, unlucky thirteen. Ooh. Remember, remember what the infantry magistrate told us earlier? He has a name! I don't care. You mean talking... You mean about you taking command of the advance guard? Yeah. I've been thinking about what I want you guys to do. You can't be in the advance guard. And so, so sooner or, or later I'm going to be I'm going to send you off to fight with the main body or the rear guard. So what does that mean? I assume you're going to take him up on his command offer? Yes. You were at Toba Fushimi. You're a good commander for men who's never seen a real battle. These men guys have the theory, but not the experience. We've got the experience, but none of their allegedly superior tactics. So, I guess we'll kind of cover each other's asses. Make up for what the other lacks. You guys should be perfect. But... Ichikata-san's logic made sense, but Shimada-san didn't seem to be very excited about being separated from his commander. They looked at one another for several silent moments until Shimada-san finally nodded. Hmm. I understand. Whatever you order me to do, I'll do it. But first, I want you to tell me something. This doesn't mean you're planning to disband the Shinsengumi, does it? If I fight this, I'll do it as a member of the Shinsengumi. Even if our standard isn't me leading in, as it leading me into battle, it's still held high on my, in my heart. Are you all right with that? Shimada-san and I felt the same way, it seemed. Ejikata-san may have given up when we lost Kondo-san, but not the rest of us. That meaning was a loss on Ejikata-san, and he looked away uncomfortably before finally mumbling a response. <clears throat> Fine. Whatever. He sounded so... dispassionate. I should also point out that I think commanding soldiers is a little more than she can handle. She doesn't belong on the front line. She's a page, not a soldier. The soldiers wouldn't listen to a woman even if she knew what to say. I think you should find another post for her. Alright. I'll go tell the others what you've decided. With that, he turned and jogged off towards the rest of the Shinsengumi soldiers. Ijikata-san and I were left alone. He sighed and his, soldier, his shoulders drooped. Suddenly he looked very, very tired. Um, why did you try to order us away? He didn't answer. Instead, he tilted his head back to gaze up at the stars that speckled the night sky. That long, melancholy silence spoke volumes. Just as I began to regret questioning his decision, he spoke up. Oh. If I knew Kondo was coming back, then I could go out there ready to give my life to win. But that's out of my hands now. Just like Yamazaki said, Kondo-san and I were the Shinsugumi. With him gone... There's no way in hell I can carry all this on my own. Ichikata son was often rude or cruel when he spoke to me, but I never heard him sound so defeated before. And he had never talked that way about the Shinsengumi. His shoulders sagged. <laughs> Senpachi was right, wasn't he? Huh? Remember what he said when we decided to go to Kofu Castle? He said there was no way in hell 
Anawakamami Katsu would give us money and weapons without some sort of hidden agenda. He was right. And so was Hadada. You know who just re who just turned the Edo Castle over to the Imperial Army? Awanokami Katsu. What? Then that meant the battle in Kofu had been. He wanted to cozy up. He wanted to cozy up to the new government, but we would have made that tough. So he had to get rid of us. He gave a dry <laughs> laugh and kicked despondently at a rock near his foot. Bush! Damn it! Why didn't I see that? If I had been thinking, there would have been no way that would have slipped past me. But I was desperate. I wanted Kondo to be out fighting big, important battles, winning himself all sorts of glory. I let that blind me. And then we lost the war, and Kondo lost his spirit. All of that for nothing. <sighs> I didn't know what to say, so I just listened. The Shinsengumi had put their lives on the line for the Shogunate. The Shogun should have come to their aid, but instead the Shinsengumi was abandoned, and because of that, we'd lost Kondo-san. We busted our asses practicing our swordsmanship until we finally earned our swords. Now, we're no match for farmers and peasants from Choshu, because they've got guns! Aren't samurai supposed to be the masters of warfare? What the hell have we been fighting so hard for? Is anything I believe in still true? We believe that there was something there for us. At the end. So no matter how bad shit got, we just ground our teeth and climbed up that hill. But now it turns out it was just a goddamn hill. And there was nothing there. What the hell are we supposed to do now? What the hell am I supposed to believe in? With every word he spoke, I could feel his pain. It had been Hijigata-san and Kondo-san's partnership that had allowed the Shinsengumi to flourish. The but the Shogun had betrayed him. War had changed, and now he felt the world moving on without him. All that Hijikata-san had done was fading away, and the pain of that loss was destroying him. What should I say to help lessen that pain? I believe in you. I believe in you. Oh. I think you feel this way because you've lost what you've believed in. But the men out there, the few that are left, they think what they believe in is you. They think that as long as you're there to lead them, they'll be fine. And they refuse to show fear in front of you. They want to see the kind of men they are. They want you to see the kind of men they are. And I think that because of that, they'll fight against the men with guns if you tell them to. I didn't know what else I could say to make him feel better. But I hoped that something I said might help soothe his wounded soul at least a little. As much as I could, I said what I felt. To be honest, I don't really know much about things like the reason the Shinsengumi exists or what you should believe in. But if somebody asked me why I was here, I think I'd say that it's because I believe in you, Hijikata-san. So, um, maybe that had been the wrong thing to say. He was worried about what he believed in, not me. All I done was probably give him yet another thing to worry about, or pressure. After all, I was just an observer and not even a very educated one. How could I even begin to guess what kind of troubles weighed on his mind? Hiji got the sun turned to look at me, but for once the light in his eyes was soft. If you lose sight of something, the only person who can find it again is you. 
Besides, we've got a big fight coming up. Guess I should be thinking about how we're going to win that. Not whining about my problems. With a small crooked smile, he turned back to the stars. We fell what silent. That? That's a cricket! We fell silent. That does not sound like a cricket. No, it doesn't. We fell silent again. Worried I'd only make things worse if I spoke. I kept my mouth shut. The only sounds were nearby bugs chirping and fluttering in the night. Really planning on st to, uh, sticking around? I knew he wanted to go along, but I didn't go. But I couldn't go with Shimada-san, and we both knew it. Couldn't exactly send me away. Yes, I am. Perhaps I didn't know how I could help him just yet, but I could hardly leave him alone. Hmm. Fine. Just stay out of my way. His voice was cold and emotionless. Yes, I know. We stood there in the silence of the night. I was a demon. My body healed so quickly that most wounds disappeared almost immediately. At that moment, I wished that my body was his. But maybe that wouldn't be enough. What Hijikata-san needed was a body where no scars could form, physical or emotional. <laughs> he moaned suddenly and bent over in pain. Fury! He, he, jikata san In a matter of seconds, his hair began to turn white. L let's go over here! I led him into the shadow of a large tree, where the nearby soldiers wouldn't be able to see him. Hopefully, no one would notice us. Oh no. Damn it. Why now? He spoke through gritted teeth, and as I watched, his breath become began coming in gasps. Hello, Mr. Yawn. I knew it. Frustration fought for dominance on his face, with pain as the bloodlust began to take hold. I... Say it with me now. Gave him blood. Blood. Hijikata san. I ran towards him, pulling at my collar to loosen it. He grasped my intent and grimaced. But he took hold of me and pulled me roughly towards him. Nom 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 nom. It has it. He has it even. I felt a dull sting on the back of my neck and then the hot trickle of blood. Then I felt his lips. No. Not gonna do it now. No, I already did it. Motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> The quiet sound of his drinking filled my ears in the silence of the night. His warm breath came in pants across the back of my neck, but after a time I felt it begin to steady. Slowly his grip loosened. I could sense the pain leaving his body. Then without a word he pulled away from me. How long do you plan on to keep letting me do this? What? When he looked at me, I saw worry in his eyes. Oh! I smiled back. Forever. As long as you need me, I'll be here. The misery on his face only deepened. You're a stupid girl. And I'm a man who lost sight of what makes him human. How can you just let me cut you open like that and drink your blood? What the hell are you thinking? It's alright, really. I want to do this. There was nothing for him to say to that. We were in a forest a short distance away from Utsunomiya on the way to Nikko when we heard the news. Utsunomiya, a key location along the Nikko and Oshu routes that 
chose to favor the side of the new imperial government military after the Battle of Toba Fushimi. You know what I'm going to do right now? BRB. Yes, it's time for a BRB. Boop. Yeah, we'll be right back, chat. Oh, shit. Nope, that's not what I meant to move. I meant to move this. It's going to be here in the sky. Yeah.
Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> All right, back to this. Yep. We're gonna finish this chapter because we're close to the end of it. Yep. So Utsunomiya has been captured by the Imperial Army. That's unexpected. Ichikata son and Notori had stopped to talk over their next move after the scouts had brought news of Utsunomiya's fall. Otori looked quite serious, but Hijikata son looked utterly unimpressed. Captured? More like they were scared enough of the Imperial Army to just bend over and take it. We showed them we're, showed them we're scarier. We showed them we're scarier, they'll come running back. I mean, we are allowed to take castles that have caps capsulated. Right, Mr. Ma Infantry Magistrate, sir? Otori pursed his lips and frowned at hijikata son. It's not that I'm against going into battle. We are leading an army, after all. But the main body and the rear guard are still on their way from Oyama. All I'm asking is that you wait until they catch up with us. Attempting to lay siege is a fall is folly beyond folly. We should <sighs> What kind of flowery and manure did that did you pull that gem from? <laughs> or what kind of flowery drill manual did you pull that gem from? Your favorite Western artillery book? Drill manual, a collection of instructions detailing the training and operational methods of soldiers. It covered many disciplines such as infantry, cavalry, and artillery. <sighs> Again, the assistance of Haruka was there, which at this moment in time in her room she's not. Um, she'd say yes. <laughs> he fucking did. <clears throat> Latori's frown deepened. I don't just study Western tactics, you know. Sun Tzu said much of the same thing in The Art of War. Thus, the highest form of generalship is to bulk the enemy's plans. The next best is to prevent the junction of the enemy's forces. The next is in order to is to attack the enemy's army in the field. And the worst policy of all is the besieged walled cities. In other words, we should only lay siege to the castle as a last resort. Attacking it head on is foolishness. If you're determined to be a fool, then the best you can do is make sure that your army is in the best condition possible and... Thus, though we have heard of stupid haste and more, cleverness has never been associated with long delays. There is no dis instance in the country having benefited from prolonged warfare. Remember that one? He's saying that it might be a little messy, but it's better to end your battles quick. Taking your sweet time just comes back to bite you in the ass. Hijikata san, please don't do that. I'm not asking you to wait for very long. They should be here in just a few days. Yeah, and what are you going to do when, if we're here twiddling our thumbs waiting for the rest of your men when the Imperial Army shows up? If the Satsuma or Chosu bring out their big guns, then we're screwed. No two ways about it. Well... For the first time, he didn't have a ready, a ready rebuttal, and ichikata san pushed ahead. You want to miss this opportunity? Then fine. I'll just take the advance guard and capture the castle myself. You'd have to be crazy to do that. That's suicide. His voice rose in shock, but hijikata son just snorted der derisively. Suicide? Fine. Bring it on. It's easy enough to deal with a man who's fighting for his life. But try fighting a man who doesn't care whether he lives or dies. His eyes shone with the excitement of a new challenge. Oh, no. No, it was something else. What I saw in his eyes wasn't a man rising to a challenge, but...
but the mad glint of man who of a man who no longer was interested in living. I mean, well, well, I guess we can see. I'll take us to Usunomiya's castle by the his lips pulled back from his teeth in a feral grin, and he looked off towards Utsunomiya. With Hijikata-san like this, could we really win? April 19th. Utsunomiya Castle was in turmoil. Our forces numbered around 2,000, while the castle had barely 700 guardsmen. The battle for Shimogawara Gate was especially intense, with a thousand shogun troops roughly against 400 guards. Although the shogun soldiers easily outnumbered their opponents, the guards were able to use their defenses fortification to great effect, fighting the invaders to a standstill. Guns cracked and bullets flew across the battlefield as men screamed in pain. Ichikata Sun turned to face the 200 men now under his direct command. We can't keep this up. I guess this is as good a time as any to attack the enemy line. Uh, attack? What are you saying? They have guns! Guns? You haven't seen guns until you've seen the ones that all, that the Satsuma Chosu Alliance has. They can hit a man from almost 200 meters away. Those guns out there can barely manage 80. Besides... Taking a bullet or two won't kill you. That's crazy! The men stared back at him, stunned. Never would they have imagined that they might be given orders like these. Hijikata-san, on the other hand, stared back at them cold coldly. What the hell did you come here to do? Last I checked, it was fight a war. If you're prepared for a fight, you should be prepared to die. Am I wrong? So when I get the word, you're going to charge that line. He pointed towards the source of the bullets running down on the battlefield. Hijikata-san's men turned pale and many of them began to tremble. Eventually, one of them snapped. I can't do this. I don't want to die here. He broke and, tur and turned to run. <clears throat> Ichikata-san's sword leapt from its scabbard and sliced across the back of the fleeing man. <laughs> I, didn't fell... the... I don't think Discord heard that, but... No. Oh, well. He fell to the ground, dead. The men watching swallowed. For a few short moments, they were utterly silent. Hey! He just killed one of his own men! What is this? this is he crazy? Ishikata san let his cold eyes slide slowly across the ranks, and slowly the mumbling ceased. Anyone else want to run? If you're too scared to fight, then go ahead. Be my guest. But anyone who runs will die by this sword. <laughs> so either I kill you or or I or you take your chance out there. Take your pick. His eyes were cold and dead. Not a man there believed for a moment that he wouldn't kill them without a second thought. That man is a monster. With one final scowl, Hijikata-san turned back to the battlefield and took off across it. There he goes! He ran through the hail of bullets and fell upon the men defending the, ca the gate like a vengeful god. <laughs> His beloved sword, the Izumi no Kami Kanesada, dripped with fresh blood. But he swung it again and again, oblivious or uncaring. I hid myself in the shadows and watched. Hijikata! Son, just a little more and we might be able to take this gate! 
Shimada-san's face was smeared with dirt and blood as he ran up towards the commander. Great! Keep it up! I believe in you, Shimada. The guards fired desperately, but as Heijikatsu-san had said, their guns were old and inaccurate. Attacking men with guns head-on was a frightening prospect, but Hichikatsu-san seemed to be utterly unconcerned as he dodged and wove through them, his sword ending lives with each stroke. As a fury, he was unlikely to die from a gunshot wound unless it struck a vital organ, and he healed so quickly that bullets were largely a temporary discomfort. Still, even if he'd been only human, I didn't doubt that he would have run into that hail of bullets just as fearlessly. Fearlessly. Bleh. His hair hadn't gone white yet, but it was still afternoon. It should have been difficult for him to even stand. But to watch him fight? You would never have known. Up. Amazing. Is he even human? It looks more like a demon straight from hell. Oh, geez, I wonder what people call him. The mood among the men watching Hijikata-san fight began to change. None of them had lived, had likely ever seen a man fight so fearlessly in the face of gunfire, or even at all. His eyes glowed out of his... What? His eyes glowed out of his blood-drenched face, and his arm never slowed. Come on, man. Looks like they're running out of bullets. How about you grow up, parent? Get over here. It took a moment to roar over his shoulder before turning back to the important task of killing guards. His fearless charge seemed to have had an effect. I, I think we might be able to do this. I think we might be able to win the fight. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. We might be able to do it. Just follow the Shitsugumi. No, follow Hijikata-san. As the morale rose, so did their determination, and the fight along the gate grew more intense. Then, just after the sun had passed its zenith... It's opening! The castle gate is opening! Did we do it? Did we win? The news spread along the line like fought wildfire. Took a bit longer than that, but... Well, no, guess this is just about right. Alas, he relaxed and I saw a grin of victory on his face. That was amazing, Commander. You really are a true samurai. Watching you run straight into those bullets, I'm in awe. Ha, <laughs> kissing my ass isn't going to get you anywhere, Kai. Besides, the castle still hasn't fallen. Can't let our guard down. Right. Huh? Before we realized it, the soldiers <laughs> who'd been so reluctant to fight not so long ago had surrounded us, all of them speaking to one another in excited murmurs. Sir, that was amazing! You were like Yotsun... Yoshinutsu Minamoto reborn. You are truly the commander of the Shinsugumi. Red is such a horrible color for text. <laughs> and I'm not even colorblind. Yoshitsune Minamoto, a general from the late Heian period. He is best known for defeating the Taira clan at the battles of Ichinotani and Yashima, then destroying them at the battle of Donora Dan Danora during the Genpei War. Dan Danora. <laughs> Danora. Danora. We had you all wrong, sir. We're so sorry. You killed that man so that you could lead us to victory. You did it to ensure none of us would leave. Sir, it's an honor to fight under you. You are a true samurai. The curiosity and fear we'd seen on their faces when we first met was gone now, replaced with respect and adulation. 
What has gotten into them? Hmm. Now that the battle was over, Hijikata son was beginning to look a little ill, and his mood was souring with his health. Are you alright? He had pushed himself so hard and during daylight hours that his body had likely reached its limit. Besides, he'd been showered with who knew how much blood. The bloodlust might start up at any moment. It seemed that only sheer force of will kept him standing. Of course I'm fine. Can't die till the castle falls. He rubbed a fist across his face, wiping away sweat and blood at the same time. He turned back to the soldiers. All right, men, follow me. We're going to attack the castle before dawn. Yes, yes sir. sir. Dawn came and Hijikatsu-san led the advance guard in an attack on Otsunomiya Castle itself. Their previous cowardice now forgotten, his troops fell upon the castle's defenders with great vigor. They keep this up, this taking this castle might be easier than I thought. He looked at me with a slight grin just as Shimada-san appeared. Hijikata-san, the men we sent to the banquet hall has ran into trouble. What? We haven't seen any real resistance so far. I don't know the details. Uh, should I go see? No, I'll go. I'm leaving you in charge here. Yes, sir. Um, Hijikata-san, what should I do? Stay here. Oh, no, I <laughs> guess not. <Nope. laughs> Come with me. Don't want you to wander around getting hit by a stray bullet or something. Okay. Whee! Bef Even before we stepped into the banquet hall, I knew something was wrong. Inside, our men were dead on the floor, their bodies laid out and the s like the spokes of a wheel. And at the hub of that wheel... <sighs> what are you doing here? Decided you take a vacation? You do know there's a war going out there, right? Or maybe you're just hiding out here, hoping you won't get hurt. There's the bitch. Yeah, there he is. The only two men still standing in the banquet hall weren't strangers. They were Cosma and Amagiri, the, the demons. Wh why are you here? <clears throat> we are acting under orders of the Satsuma Domain. We are here to deliver a secret message. We did not expect to be drawn into battle here. And we certainly did not expect to encounter you. Oh, I get it. The new government says bend over and you guys say...